I've got to hand it to you, Whitey. You really know how to put a barbecue together. Jack, it's just like putting together a team. Here we go again. First, you got to have some meat in the lineup. Absolutely. Of course, Jack, everybody has a few hot dogs. Every team does. But you know the most important ingredient... What's that, Skipper? ...is having a great pitcher. Now you're talking. Nothing like smooth bush beer. But, Jack, this pitcher needs some glasses. Why do you always thought you said it was the umpires who needed glasses? <laughs> who, me? No way. They can see in the dark. You wouldn't happen to be a steak guy, would you? <laughs> I don't know if St. Peter, up in the pearly gates of heaven, is a baseball fan. But if he is, the first two things he would have asked to Whitey Herzog was, well, welcome to heaven and what's wrong with the Cardinals? He was the smartest baseball guy I ever knew, and he never missed a Cardinal game, watching until he died at age 92 on Tuesday. With the help of producer Andy Moeller, we give you a look at his life. What kind of manager is Whitey Herzog? I like to make things happen. June 8th, 1980 was the beginning of the end for a decade of mediocre Cardinal baseball. And boy, did Darrell Norman Elver Herzog make things happen. He left nearby New Athens, Illinois, for an eight-year big league career. He learned at the feet of the legendary manager, Casey Stengel, which influenced his second career as a manager. After brief stints with the Rangers and Angels, he took over the Kansas City Royals and won three division titles. With the Cardinals, he began to make things happen at the winter meetings of 1980. All in all, dealer Herzog sent away 12 players that week and got back nine. Three eventual Hall of Famers changed teams. After just falling short of the postseason in the strike year of 1981, Whitey delivered his master strokes, acquiring shortstop Ozzie Smith from San Diego and fleecing the Yankees of a young outfielder named Willie McGee. By October of 1982, Whitey and his revamped Redbirds gave owner Gussie Bush one more championship. The Cardinals fell short of another championship, due in part to bad luck. Key injuries to Vince Coleman in 85 and Jack Clark in 87 neutered the Cardinals offense. And then there was that guy, oh, Denkinger. Right Whitey's stepping down in 1990. He never put on a uniform again. He never put on a uniform again. And in 2010, he got the call to Cooperstown. Whitey was officially what we in St. Louis knew all along, a Hall of Famer. Whitey Herzog. I remember just a situation where I was hurt and I couldn't play. And we were playing the Mets and Davey Johnson was over there. And he asked me to come up and stand, you know, come on the on deck circle like I'm pinch hitting, you know. And so the other manager made the, made a move to come get me as a right-hander, but he knew I wasn't going to hit, and he took me down the dugout and brought somebody up there like Braun or somebody that he really wanted. And he just was a little step ahead of the other manager, and you knew that before the game started. Everybody thinks he's smarter than everybody else. Will you illustrate that? What, what made him smart? He, he just, I think he was so good at reading people's personalities that he knew that sometimes a player needed uh, a pat on the back, um, a whisper in the ear, and sometimes he would communicate through the media that uh, things better change or else <laughs> you're not going to be playing. And so, but he would, he wasn't afraid to to, uh, to let you know. And I think it was really good. His most, one of the most talented, underrated talents he had was he, he let his coaches do a lot of his communication. The Vance like double off the wall slash home run. Yeah, Andy hit a line drive home run off the wall, but it hit just over the yellow line, hit the brick wall, and came back in. But Jim Leland jumps out of the dugout, runs out to second base, argues that he, he went over the wall for a home run. And uh, they had a big meeting out there. The home plate umpire walked out there. And after a few minutes, Jim Leland jogs off because the ump threw up his hand that it was a home run. As Jim Leland's jogging into his dugout, Whitey jumps up and jogs out to second base. He goes, Gosh, Don, he goes, I know it was a home run. He goes, half this ballpark knows it was a home run. But if I don't come out here and chew you guys out, they're going to think I'm not sick enough for my ball players. And he started yelling at the umps. And he goes, you guys are doing a great freaking job. And then <laughs> jogged off to a standing ovation. 
Whitey was my dad. Whitey was so instrumental in my life in more ways than anyone would ever, ever know. Whitey loved me, but I loved him even more. It was just an honor and a blessing to be in his presence. We lost a gem this week in Whitey Herzog. And I don't know who was actually a better manager, Whitey or Tony La Russa, but I can unequivocally say Whitey won the popularity contest. Tony was West Coast and red wine. Whitey was Midwest with beer and hot dogs. He connected with this town like few coaches and sports figures overall ever have. And he was right about almost everything. Build the team around the ballpark. Knew that Bob Horner would not produce here and Willie McGee would. But I remember more the man himself. He gave me the most thoughtful interviews every year for 25 straight years in his basement in his home in Sunset Hills. Ask Keith Hernandez about Whitey. Whitey got killed for trading him for basically nothing. He had to trade him because of Keith's drug addiction. Whitey would never go public with it and embarrass Keith. And then there's the story of Don Denkinger. He basically cost Whitey another world championship. We've all seen the call. Whitey invited Denkinger to his golf tourney and banquet about 15 years ago. He honored Don and he told everybody there to respect him and treat him well. And at the end of the night, he gave Don Denkinger a watch. It was a Braille watch, a little dig from Whitey. That's Whitey Herzog, and that's our show for tonight. Wire made the call right away. You lip readers in the audience know that Whitey Herzog is telling Lee Wire that he missed the play. A few would have deleted also in that. Whitey, I don't believe this fish exists. Jack, he's down there. Fishing's like baseball. You have to have some patience. Maybe you're using the wrong bait. And now we're down to our last bush beer. That's it. Nobody can resist a smooth taste of bush beer. Marty, he's going for it. Oh, Start the boat, Jack. Ooh, that was close, Skipper. Whitey is going to give us a little clinic on some of his secret baseball tactics. It's just coaching, Jack, how to pick up the signs. You got nobody out and a man on first. Let me use this cold bush beer here for the batter. Now, if I only need one run, I'm going to give him this. That's the bunt sign. If I need a bunch of runs, I may give him this. That's the hit and run. You've got it, Jack. No, why do you've got it? That's my bush. You know what this is? Uh -uh. That is the take sign. <laughs> <laughs> The double steal. Well, you got runners on first and third with a lot of speed, and you want to get a run. Let me use those cold bush beers for runners. Okay, I'm going to need one of those back. Well, this guy over here takes a big lead. He tries to distract the pitcher. You get two strikes on the hitter.